Turn my eyes from worthless things and revive me in Your ways, Lord. For the things that men esteem are detestable in Your eyes. To whom shall I go? of the world is passing away, but the Spirit gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. King of glory, hallelujah, for he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of all of our praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. Even through the, especially through the testing time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He's chosen you. He's chosen us. He's chosen every one of his people for particular trials and tests to bring them through, to form and fashion Christ in them the way that he wants to see it. Hallelujah. It's through the trials, through the tribulations that we are formed. Amen. Through the fire that we are formed. Amen. Hallelujah. That what's not of God gets burned out. Hallelujah. And if we refuse 
the thing that take that the Lord uses to form us, then we just go on and just uh we just have to be stagnant a until, bog. until we accept. That's right. <laughs> until we say yes, Lord. Yep. Yes. To He'll let us and sit in that mind. bog just as long as we want to. Amen. You know, in I that sloth to. or whatever. Amen. He Amen. will absolutely let us do it. <laughs> He'll say, are you ready yet? You ready to go forward yet? Amen. Hallelujah. And we are ready today, Lord, to go forward with you. Father, we bless you and praise you and thank you for this word today. Oh, God, you are the awesome, holy, slow to anger, abounding in kindness, almighty God. Hallelujah. We worship you today. We thank you, God. We run unto you in our safe, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. For you are our strong tower. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the enemy cannot touch us. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, that you protect us and you have delivered us. By your awesome death on the cross, you've delivered us from the wrath to come. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the mighty King, the Holy One. Lord, I ask you today that you would open our hearts to receive your word, your implanting in us of your awesome truth. And I thank you for delivering us this very day, O oh God. We thank you, Lord. You deliver us every minute, every hour, every second of every day. Hallelujah. You protect us from all the machinations and all the wickedness of the devil and all the people that work for him. Thank you, God. You are the mighty God. We love you. We praise you and adore you today. Let your word penetrate deep into us, O God, and have its perfect way with us, dividing us under between the joint and the marrow and the soul and the spirit, revealing the thoughts, the intents, the motives of our heart, O God. O Lord, lead us in the way everlasting. Keep us looking unto you the author, the finisher of our faith, and crush the serpent dragon under our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 You know, this, this walk seems to be getting narrower and narrower. <coughs> and amen. it seems that, you know, T. Austin Sparks had something the other day that he wrote. And Here, pull it up right there. You got that other. Back then. Right and Just read that quote. Praise God. It's a powerful um, quote, and it's so true. I don't know when he gave the quote. We could find out. But it was probably back in the 40s sometime, I imagine. I think it was. 1940s, he said this. And it's so true today. Okay? Today's message is, who is on the Lord's side? Who? Who's on the Lord's side? Okay? You notice after the title, there's three question marks. Because it's a deep question. And three exclamation points. And God is saying, who's on my side? Yeah. That's what God is saying. Who's on my side? He's finding out who is. See? That's for sure. Yeah. And I want to I wanna say to God, I'm on your side, Lord. And I do say that. But then he'll come and whisper to me, then, then why are you doing this? Or why are you doing that? See? Why do you doubt me? Why do you fear? Why do you, why do you let these things attack you? You see what I'm saying? Why do you uh, mull them over, so to speak? Sometimes. See, and I have to repent and say, you know, Lord, you're right. You're absolutely right. Now read that, read that quote. This is a picture of a church steeple. Okay. And T. Austin Spar said this. The fact is, beloved, and it is not a pleasant thing to say at all, but the fact is that the antagonist of God's thought are Christians, those that profess. Christians. Not the world. Not the world. It is the Christian church of today as it is as, as it, it is. is in its present system which opposes what is God's deepest and fullest, and fullest will. will. And you know we have found that to be it true is over the years. True. Absolutely true. We have certainly found that to be true. That's right. Because God is finding out in this hour who are the professors and who are the True. Walk in the that's true right. walk. That's right. That's right. Amen. I mean, he's finding it out in this hour. That's right. Amen. And you know what finds it out? The trials and tribulations. That's right. That's the thing that brings things to the forefront. Amen. Who's really with the Lord and who's really not. That's right. Who's just a professor. That's right. 
That's what brings it out and reveals it. That's exactly and right. And boy, I tell you, the Lord knows how to do that in a way that no one else does. Amen. Amen. He knows exactly what to bring into the life to reveal what is truly there and he, and, in and, the heart. And to show us. Right. To get us back in the narrow way. So right. God does it. God, the tests and the trials are to keep us in the narrow way. It's to keep us looking to the Lord. See, who's on the Lord's side? Right here, I'm going to read this out of <clears throat> Exodus 32. Okay. Now, when I'm, when, when, I'm, when I'm reading this, now think about the fact that Moses represents Christ, okay? Moses was as God unto the people, okay? He was the deliverer. He's a foreshadower of Christ. God said to Moses, I will raise up a prophet like unto you, okay? And those are whom the people are going to hear him. Many, many people have listened and heard and are still hearing today the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the prophet, okay, that Moses was speaking of. But Moses went up into the mount to receive the law from God. It's God's law, okay? People like to say the law of Moses. No, it's the law of Jehovah given to Moses, okay? You see, that's what it is. It's the law of Jehovah for man given to Moses. Moses was the intermediary, okay? You understand? Today, the Holy Spirit's been given by the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and the Holy Spirit's been given to us, and he comes, and God's put his, he put his law in our hearts. See? It's God's law. And if we violate that law, what do we get? We get death in some sort of way, okay? Who was on the Lord's side? Right here. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mountain, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. And that's what the church has done. Make us a god, a person we can see and worship. See, and hence you have the Roman Catholic Church and the, and the popes of Rome, okay? And the, and the saints, they idolize the saints. I know, I was a Roman Catholic. I was there, okay? They idolize, I mean literally idolize, light candles before the saints, light incense, do all this other stuff. Just like the heathen of old, amen? See, that's what they do. Who's on the Lord's side, see? God is asking today. But And Aaron said unto them, break off the golden earrings, see? This is what the church has done, right? <coughs> After the first century. Break off the golden earring which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. After that he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Just what you read by Austin Sparks. These be thy gods, O Christians, your church denomination your method, the way you do things. And and the Holy Spirit, oh, well, we'll talk to the Holy Spirit when we really need some help, but we're going to run everything right now. You see what I'm saying? And that's what they're doing. And the Bible says, God's not going to have any of it. Amen? You're going to be on the Lord's side, and you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit today, or you're going to be on the world's side, on religion's side. Or out. Or out. Because the Lord in that day, just remember <coughs> what the Word says. <coughs> That there will be those that say, but Lord, I did this and I did that. Notice who the focus is, I. I did this and I did that. Did we not cast out did devils we not in cast that out, Did we not do stuff for you, Lord? And the Lord will say, I depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. See? That's what he says. So there's a lot that are deceived right now. And those will be the ones that gonna, the Lord says, depart from me. We're going to show right here. We're going to read this word. We're going to keep reading. We're going to show you who's on the Lord's side. Okay? And as we go through this and we, we see who's on the Lord's side, we want to say to you today, and, and this is for us as well, examine. Say, Lord, examine my heart. Is there any place where I have not been on your side? Amen? This is very important. Today is the day of salvation. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Okay? You understand? God could come speak a word to me today. And he's speaking a word to me this morning. He gave me this word. 
for this broadcast. And he's speaking a word to Sharon. See, how do we respond to that word? See, I want to be on the Lord's side. I want to be in 100% agreement with the Lord. Amen? Yes. I don't care how hard it sounds or how what he says. I want to be in agreement. I got holy bumps with him because he's my father. He's my creator, and I love him. Yeah. Amen? We have to, I tell you, he is really narrowing it down That's so right. much. That's right. We have to be very listening to him in this hour because the enemy is around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and he comes in under the guise of good and tries to get us into situations God does not want us in <coughs> Amen. and we Amen. have to take the stand we have to stay on the Lord's side in all situations and not be moved or turned or moved by human compassion or anything else. We need to stay in the stand of the Lord. Amen. 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 I tell you what, because if we are not on the Lord's side, whose side are we on? The world and the devil and the flesh. Right. That's it. See, the I mean, that's plain. World. That's right. Are we going to beat around the bush on this broadcast? No, we're not. Amen. Amen. Preach it, sister. Cut to the chase. Amen. Cut to where the uh, rubber meets the road. Hallelujah. This is a serious time. Amen. I tell you what. Amen. Uh, and people better get serious about this walk. Today. Not if two they years are from professing now. <laughs> it, they better right. begin to walk That's it right. if they're not. Because it, and the reason to be so serious today is because we do not know. The moment, the hour, the day, the minute, the second, when God will absolutely destroy this whole infrastructure of this cosmos, of this world order. I'm telling you, he's going to do it. He is going to do it. Listen, listen. Aaron said to the people, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. This is religion. Okay. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings to this golden calf. This is your God, he was saying to the people. See. And offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way, which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped it, and have sacrificed thereunto, and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Do you see how God looks at idol worship? Do you see how the Lord looks at the filth of this world, and the filth of this quote-unquote Christianity of today? When all they're doing is worshiping their self and, and throwing the law of God out, throwing the, the scripture out, and just doing it their own way. I'm telling you right now, God does not like it at all. Okay? You can make so many things an idol. That's right. A golden idol. That's right. I mean an absolutely golden idol. That's right. You can make money a golden idol. That's right. You can make family a golden idol. That's right. You can make work a golden idol. You can make anything work. That's right. Reputation a golden That's idol. That's right. Your dress, the way you look, an idol. Being somebody in this world, you can make that a golden idol. That's right. Being accepted by people, That's you can right. make that a, an That's idol. That's right. That's right. A, a golden idol. That's right. I tell you what. People professing the name of Jesus Christ and saying, I'm a Christian and I'm a follower of the Lord, better start walking it 
And their life better start lining up with their mouth right. in this hour. Because everyone that's professing to be one of the Lord's people, he's going <coughs> to make sure whether they are or not. He's going to test that to make sure whether they are or not. To make sure whether whether their heart is with him or with something else or right. someone else. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to go through the fire if you're a true believer. That's right. You got to go through much tribulation to get into the kingdom. Amen. If you're true That's right. and truly a true believer, you're going to go through the fire. Amen. That's all there is to it. Amen. Because God will purge out which not, what is not of him. That's right. This is the question in this hour, isn't it? Who is on the Lord's side? We see the account of Moses. He asked that question, didn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, this is right. so serious this is, right listen, listen to this. Listen. I mean, God told Moses, Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against mm -hmm. them and that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. This is what God told Moses. You, you stand over here, Moses. I'm going to wipe all these people out and then I'm going to raise up a nation through you. Okay? I'm going to raise up a nation through you, Moses. Just like he did from Abraham. God can start with Moses. He could have wiped them all out, every one of them. But look at the intercession of Moses. Moses was an intercessor. Who's on the Lord's side? You say, I'm on the Lord's side. I say, I'm on the Lord's side. Sharon says, I'm on the Lord's side. Do we intercede like we should? I'll leave it right there. Do we intercede like we should? For people? For the body? And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. See? Verse 7 again. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people. Talking to, he's talking to Moses. Thy people. And then down here in verse 11, And Moses besought the Lord his God and, and the Lord and said, Lord, why did thy wrath wax, wax hot against thy people? Moses is reminding God, These are your people. See? We need to do that more. God, these are your people. They say they love you. God, you do the work you have to do in their lives, oh God, to keep them in the narrow way, to keep them focused on you, Lord. Hallelujah. We got to remember that, huh? Praise God. Praise God. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. So Moses is interceding. Then Moses, he comes down the mountain, saints. And Joshua says, hey, I hear this noise in the camp. It's the noise of, of war. And Moses says, no, it's not of war. It's not of war. It's, it's a party. They're having a party down there. See, They're having a party down there, Joshua. And look what happened. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and, and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire, ground it to powder, and strawed it upon the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot, for thou knowest the people, that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, Make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what has become of him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let him break it off. Let them break it off. So they gave it me, and I cast it into the fire. And there came out this calf. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? That's what Moses said. Who is on the Lord's side? 
read that again. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp. He went up, he, he was right there at the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. That's what the Lord is speaking today. Who is on my side, saith the Lord? You come unto me. Okay? Amen? Yes, because Moses represented God That's in right. that situation. That's exactly right. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. All the sons of Levi. The Levites were the priests, saints. The, the Lord says, I have made thee kings and priests unto our God. Are you a priest today? Are you an intercessor today? And he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Now this is going to come to pass right here, again. But it's not the literal sword, the steel. Okay, It's not the iron sword. It's the word of God, the sword of truth, the word of God, see? And you have to be able to quote the word of God, but before you can quote the word of God, you have to believe the word of God. And before you can believe the word of God, you have to repent of your sins and believe the gospel, hallelujah. And then you believe the word of God, and it becomes a sword, hallelujah. And you become God's battle axe, hallelujah. And you do the will of the Lord, what he tells you to do. You speak what he tells you to speak. Hallelujah. And all these idolaters out there, they'll be falling to the right and to the left. Those that are truly the Lord's will repent. They will come on to the Lord's side. Hallelujah. That's not our business. Our business is to wield the sword. Hallelujah. That's Praise right. God. You know, I was thinking about it came to my memory about that woman that had that store. <coughs> you know, everybody's all up to the hill. Lock and load, boy. That's how they're going to protect their self in this right. hour. That's right. Well, what does the Lord say? His angels, he sent his angels. One angel killed 150,000 right. enemies. One angel that God sent. And it could be a lot more, depending on what God say, said to let happen That's right. in that situation. But this woman, she had the Lord in her. And this robber came in. She didn't have a gun in the store. But she had a sword. And she had the Almighty God within her. And here comes this robber into the store. Pointing a gun right at her. Give me your money. What did she do? She pointed her finger at that guy and she said, In the name of Jesus, you get out of my store right now in the name of Jesus. And you see on the film the guy backing up and running out of her store. <laughs> People have the wrong idea of what protection is in this hour. They're not depending on the true and the almighty God for their protection. They're depending on the lock and load, something they can hold in their hand. Are you on the Lord's side when you got that mindset? No. No, I don't think so. No. Not, not when you have that murderous thing in your heart going to kill anybody that tries to take your stuff, you know, or whatever. This is a murderous attitude because as Christians, we are to die to self. Hallelujah. God gives us all good things to enjoy, the word says. God gives us possessions. God gives us everything to steward. We're stewards of it, okay? But we're not to let the things we have control us. We're not to let the things we have possess us, okay? You see? And, and that way, we're able to move freely in the spirit, move freely wherever God says and how God says to move. Hallelujah. You know, what happened with this deal with the children of Israel? They couldn't see something. <coughs> they didn't want to wait on Moses to get back. Mm -mm. They wanted to make their own way. That's right. They wanted to reach out and touch somebody, so to speak. Mm -hmm. 
I got to be around somebody. I got to do this. I got to be able to touch it. I got to be able to do it. Forget the spiritual aspect of anything. If I can't see it and touch it and be around it, then I'm not going to be able to walk this walk. Oh. <laughs> oh. This is not about sin mm -mm. or feeling or anything else. Right, with the senses, amen. With it the, is with about the five natural senses, faith. it's not about, that's right. That's right. And much of the time, Hallelujah. you do not see. That's right. Preaching. You do not feel. You are walking out in faith. Hallelujah. I pray, I so pray to God that God's people really get this before the time actually, the hammer actually totally falls in this nation. That's exactly and right. The world. That's been our prayer. And that's because what we continue to pray. That. <laughs> this Amen. is so crucial. You know, the other morning we just fell down because before the Lord because you can feel the grief of the Lord in your heart when you see people going off and you see what's more important to them and it's not God Amen. and you see the path people getting off the path getting off the narrow road right. because of security or love of other things and, and you feel the grief of the Lord. You just have to fall down before the Lord and intercede for his right. people right. about it. Because I tell you, there's a big old huge thing in our heart that we can see out there spiritually if people do not right now. Right. Right now. Right, right. now in this hour. Get on the right path in the right way and stay on it, no matter how hard it is. <coughs> Amen. Let me finish reading this now. And the children of Levi did according unto the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Hallelujah. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day see you you get a blessing bestowed upon you when you stand for the truth from almighty god amen on the lord's side that's what you spoke this morning remember you were telling me that, <laughs> that is so good see and it came to pass on the morrow that moses said unto the people ye have sinned a great sin and now will go up unto the lord peradventure i shall make an atonement for your sin we got to remember moses was a was a, was a levite and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. I mean, he was interceding, saints. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Now that's an intercessor. See, that's a true intercessor. The Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people, because they made the calf which Aaron made. Oh, saints, this is a very serious thing. God's saying today, who is on the Lord's side? Now we're going to go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 9. Sharon, and begin reading. Now, who is on the Lord's side? God's going to show us who's on his side right here in Ezekiel chapter 9. And I'm telling you, this is for today. I'm telling you right now. And I'm telling you right now, the Bible teaches us and shows us, and we know it by experience, that we are the temple of the Lord. Amen. We're the temple of the Lord. The church is the temple of God today. His people, his called out, his elect, his very elect. We are the overcomers. We are the ones who are filled with the spirit of God, the Shekinah glory. Hallelujah. I mean, the, the glory of God is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. 
Oh, Lord, have mercy upon your people today. Go ahead, read verse. Keep, keep, just start reading. Read the, read the chapter and just let's just talk about it. Praise God. Who's on the Lord's side? He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. They stood beside the brazen altar. The altar represents the cross. Keep reading. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now you see here, there's a mark set upon the foreheads. Mm -hmm. of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, in the midst of what? In the midst of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The word teaches us that we are Jerusalem. The, the professors, those who believe in Christ, those who are truly born anew, okay? And I'm telling you right now, there are so many believers out there who are in a backslidden state today, literally backslidden away from what they know in their heart of hearts they shouldn't be doing certain things and they're doing them anyway and if you looked at their life you wouldn't say that they're in some kind of gross sin or anything but in their heart they know they're not being obedient to God see the, the, the Lord is not first in their life just like what you were talking about earlier huh? It's something about self that's going on. There's something going on in their life. It's their, them first. Not the Lord. See? Set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. In the midst of God's people. In the midst of the church. See? Verse 5. That is on the men there that's an individual that's like man or woman right right that sigh but see the lord showed us this a long time ago because that's what we do in our heart we have the grief and the sighing seeing the abominations going on in this world and in the life of God's people and the Lord's people turning and being in the world and we can see the end we can see spiritually where they're headed and we sigh and cry before God because of it well listen God puts a mark on those that do that it's a good mark. And to others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city. Now he's telling this angel, Don't touch those that I'm putting this mark on. I'm putting this mark on their foreheads because they're crying and sighing before me <coughs> for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. But this is what he said and to the others he said the others he said in that aren't hearing, doing that he's talking about he's talking about the, the in verse 5 it's talking about those others there were six that came in one of them had the ink horn and the others God said he's going to see, write it down and to the others he said in mine hearing go ye after him through the city and smite let not your eyes spare neither have ye right. pity yeah. verse 6 
slay utterly old, young, both maids and little children and women. Now listen. But come not near any man upon, upon whom, whom the, the mark, mark is the mark mm -hmm. that he put. And begin at my sanctuary. Yeah, begin at my sanctuary. Where does that mean? Begin with his people. That's right. See, this is the thing. This is just, just, just what you're talking about. See, in verse 6, that's what you were talking about just a second ago. Okay. Where God says, there's those who are the ones who are sighing and who are crying. And God says he has set a seal upon his people that do that. His people that are grieved. His people that are crying out to those who are straying away or are straight away. You see what I'm saying? Calling out to the lost even. Come into the kingdom. Come into the Lord Jesus Christ by repentance. Believe the gospel. See? And we do that. And the Lord has a seal. It talks about that as well in the book of the Revelation. See? Chapter 7. And I'm telling you right now, the sealing is taking place, right? Mm -hmm. It's taking place right now. There are times when we kneel down to pray, we can absolutely feel that seal mm -hmm. right right in our forehead. Just feel the, the heat of God, the burning of God's spirit in our in our bodies, just and praising and worshiping him. But, you know, for those that would say, well, this isn't God's people. Wait a minute. What did I just read here? Right. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. Wow. In other words, make an end of it. Right. But come not near any man, and that's man or woman, upon whom is the mark we just talked about. And begin at my sanctuary. Begin there, he told them. What does it say? Judgment begins, begins in the, in the house, house of the Lord. Of the Lord. Then they began at the ancient, at the ancient men. men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go so the forth. house was going to be defiled with what? Death. Go ye forth, and they went forth and slew in the city. Now verse 8. Here's... And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and, cried and, and said, Ah, oh, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then he said unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly great, and the land is full of blood, in the city full of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. The Lord doesn't see what we do. Yeah. Now look at verse 10 and 11. And as for me, also mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense, their pay way. back their way upon their own head. That's right. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the ink horn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. Wow. Now, who is on the Lord's side? Those who are crying, those who are sighing for the abominations of this wicked church of today. Those who are crying out to God in intercession for the people who they know are not in the right way. They're on the Lord's side today. And if you're one of those people who have strayed away from the Lord, hey, you're hearing this message, you know you're straying in a certain way, you turn around right now and come back to the Lord. Come right back to the Lord. He'll receive you. If you repent and turn around back to Him, He'll receive you. Believe the Word once again. Believe it. Where well, there was one day when you believed the whole thing, and then slowly but surely, oh, the enemy has wrecked so many lives spiritual lives of people by just casting a little doubt here and a little doubt there poison here poison there we have so many messages on our youtube channel that we've made about this very subject amen We're talking about how the enemy works 
But I'm telling you right now, people don't want to hear the truth hardly at all anymore. Right? They want to wait maybe two or three or four years. That that just still sticks me with me what that guy said. It's always down the road I'll I'll get serious with God. Down the road I'll get, you know, serious. Yeah. What about if you live in Seattle? Down the road I'll get serious. When's that going to be? When you see the lava and the mudslides pouring out of Mount Rainier coming straight at you? You're going to get right with God? No. See? No time. I mean, what, what what's going to happen in this world? We don't know exactly. There's all these scenarios painted, right? The Lord showed me years ago, nuclear annihilation. Okay, that could happen. It could. But the Lord showed me one time it was a big smoke screen, see? They did drop the bomb on Japan. They did two of them, okay? And he said, and they've been using and they've been using nuclear weapons mm -hmm. since then mm -hmm. in the earth. Okay? Won't get into all that. But see, God doesn't need nuclear weapons. No. God doesn't need nuclear weapons to make a man's flesh, you know, just melt off of him and his eyeball just dissolve in his head. God doesn't need that. Okay? That's happening right now yeah. with different diseases it is, it is. in other countries. That's right. That one disease that it's <coughs> it's a flesh eating disease. Yeah. And it literally does eat the flesh. That's right. And it out of the eye sockets That's and right. everything else. I mean Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord didn't exactly have a nuclear right. deal going on, did he? He rained down fire and brimstone. From heaven. Right. It's sulfur. I from mean the it, heavens. it was it, I mean and he, he can do that again. You know, the, I feel such a seriousness and also such a grieving because people seem to be so flippant about the times. Right. They're all and, into the... And they're turned to listen to people that are also flippant about the times. Yeah, they're into, and they're into all this prophecy stuff and stuff, you know? It, it's it like, is so grieving to God because he's... He's wanting his people to draw nigh unto That's him, it. to draw That's nigh it. unto him. That's right. Hallelujah. And be close to him. Amen. amen. And have a, a relationship with him. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And to love him above all. Hallelujah. More than anyone, we are to love God. And our actions will show who we love. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Praise but the thing the is, I even asked the Lord about it this morning again, and boy, he brings me right over to that verse. I said, Lord, what about this? He brings the scripture. I said, what about this, Lord, about speaking, about... And he said... Are all the houses destroyed yet? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Do you see complete and total devastation and desolation throughout the earth yet? No. I said no. He said, well then, keep, that, that's keep how speaking. <laughs> you keep that's speaking. Right, right. You keep going my way, even though it feels like you're alone. You keep going my way. You keep speaking my truth. And you know what? The really strange thing about it, he says, you speak it, make their ears fat. Right. In other words, even if nobody's listening, you continue to speak it. Think Amen. about that. Amen. Amen. Why would God say, even if nobody's listening, right. you continue to speak it? Because there's not going to be no excuse for anyone right. in that day. It says there's going to be a famine. Of hearing yeah. the word of the Lord. Not speaking the word, but hearing the word. See? So he's given us our charge. That's right. It's not time yet for you not to speak anymore. <clears throat> he keeps bringing that scripture to me too. Amen. There it is. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Isaiah 6, 8, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. 
Make the heart of this people fat and make their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant and the houses without man and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord have removed men far away and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a till tree, and as an oak whose substance is in them, when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So then you come to the point of Praise the tenth, God, the tenth, and there is a remnant. That's right. And there are those that do hear still the truth of God's word. And still want to hear the uncompromising truth of God's word. That's right. There's still those that want to hear that. Amen. And want to be what God wants them to be. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the Lord always brings it right down to the thing. To make sure there is no self involved in what he is doing. Amen. You know, those guys that came over there, who's on the Lord's side? Moses called them out. The Levites. Hallelujah. Called them out. He said, who's on the Lord's side? Amen. Well, they had a choice to stay on the other side with the rebellers and those coming against the truth. They had a choice. They could have stayed right over there. But boy, they got to get to going over there on the right side. Amen. On the Lord's side. They made their choice. That's right. They wanted to be on God's side. Well, what happened to those on the other side? A lot of them were killed that day. God opened the earth. That was and it another, swallowed. That was at another time. Swallowed but, but that's them. right. You're right, though. Their families, their children... There was no more of them at all. No more That's trace. Right. God got rid of the whole trace and the whole line of it. That's right. That's right. I'll have no more rebellion. That's right. Says the Lord. Amen. No more rebellion. That's right. Glory to the king. Now these are examples to us. If we want to rebel, we want to stay on the side that's not God's side. These are examples of what happens. Amen. That's right. He gives us a choice. He is. Uh, he Holy doesn't put God. our arm behind us and say, you do this. No. He has ways of creating circumstances well, that you we feel do like your arm behind you. <laughs> just like with Jonah. He had something for Jonah to do. Right. Jonah was God's man. He told him to do something. He <coughs> told him to go to Nineveh. Well, he rebelled and didn't do it. Well, look at all what happened to Jonah. Right. Because he didn't do what God said to do. That's right. But he did in the end, didn't he? Why? Because there was still that seed of right with Jonah. That's right. He was obedient See? to the Lord, but he was still mad about it. Yeah, he was still mad about <laughs> it. But and he that, was obedient that, about that's it. That's something, ain't it? And so this is, these are all examples in the word to us. That's what Jesus himself said. These are in samples. That's examples. Right. right. In the word. You know, and the fact is, who is on the Lord's side? This is, I mean, those who cry and sigh for the abominations. Yeah. See? Yeah. Not those who are bringing you all the news of the devil, what the devil's doing. That's not crying and sighing for the abominations that are being done. They're just bringing you all this fascinating, wow, you know, uh, UFOs, man, aliens, whatever, you know. And it's like people are like, yeah, you know. I mean, how many Christians, I remember when I was a little boy and they came out with Star Trek and Mr. Spock. I, I was just a little kid, you know, this was back in the 60s. And man, we never missed an episode of Star Trek. Not one. Right? Never missed one. And today, all this stuff is taken to another level. And it fascinates people. And many Christians are just sucked into it, you know. And it's like, that's not helping you grow in grace. That's not helping you die daily. 
That's not helping you cry and sigh for the abominations which are done okay, in the body of Christ. And people are not turning to the Lord with their whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. We know what's in our heart by what gets our attention. That's right. What That's gets right. our attention? What gets your attention, those that are listening? What catches your eye? Right. What catches your ear? What things do you pay attention to? And what do you look at? When you're on YouTube or whatever. And what are you watching? Are you fed by the Dish Network? Is that your your feeding there? Is that your dish? Or are you fed by the Word of God? Amen, amen. You know, what do, you, what do we open ourselves up to in this world? What do we open the door to? Hmm? Amen. You know? Important questions. Uh, if someone is trying to get this thing, and oh, you can be important, and you can be this and that, and oh, you're in a certain sect, a certain sect, you know, that's important in this world, or even in the Christian community. Does that get your attention? Is that what you're drawn to? And why is that? Is is there maybe a little seed of wanting to be known? Right. What Want we were to have about a at the reputation? Of this Amen. Is that what why it's catching your ear? Is that why it's catching your eye? Right. I mean, do you like the flash? Do you like the Hollywood type message? <laughs> Ask That's yourself, different. what's catching my eye? What is important to me? What do I look at? What do I think is important? What we have noticed when people start straying and going off the other way, then they gradually veer away from the true uncompromising word. And they start listening over here, paying attention over here, looking over here, and they leave that by the wayside. Why is that? Because they're walking another direction. Whether they want to admit it or not, they're walking another direction. Right. Who's on the Lord's side? Those that stay in the narrow way. Right. Those that continue no matter what. Mm -hmm. They say, yes, Lord, yes, to, the, to his will and to his way for us. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you something. We are going to continue Amen. on the narrow way. Amen. No matter what. Praise his holy no name. No matter what. Hallelujah. Because we have a God that's with us. Almighty God. Jehovah. He is with us. He is over us. He is protecting <coughs> us. He is in us. He Hallelujah. empowers us. Hallelujah. And that's the way we're going to continue. No matter what. Whether anyone comes with us or not. We're going to continue forward. Toward the mark. Of the high calling of, of God, God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay? And we're not going to let our focus be turned to the right or to the left. Hallelujah. And just like the Lord showed me again this morning, we're going to continue to speak. Because I don't see everything desolate yet. That's a good word, ain't sure. See? Hallelujah. And we're going to continue to speak just like the Lord told in right there in Ezekiel. Right. I told him. And it doesn't even matter if nobody listens. You continue to speak. Because you know what? Every time we speak a message, it goes out into the spiritual realm. That's right. It is doing a work. That's right. Because it's being spoken out That's into right. the natural realm. That's right. Out, and it's, the spiritual realm. The spir it's, we're using it's the natural It's doing message. spiritual work. Right. Exactly. exactly. And God's doing it. And he's pulling down strongholds. Hallelujah. He is breaking down untempered walls of mortar that are of mortar of false mortar. teaching Amen. and Amen. falsity. Every time we speak, Amen. every time it goes out, that's right. In the spiritual realm, that's right. So yes, we're going to continue on Amen. in the name of Jesus, right. by the Spirit of God, by the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. No matter Hallelujah. what the enemy does. And you do it too. Amen. That's right. You that are listening. Persevere. Do it press too. Press in. 
Continue on, no matter what. Don't be influenced by anything or anybody trying to get you off the path, out of the way, a different mindset, whatever it is. That's right. And you know what? You know if you're listening to something like that, because if you got the true spirit of God, you're going to get these checks. You're just going right. to know. That's right. You know? That's right. Just a recently, you know, the enemy is trying to get us into situations God does not want us into. Right. And boy, you get these checks you, yeah. all the time, you know. And then you're talking to one person, and they're telling you one thing that a person said. But then you talk to that person, and that person telling you totally different. Right. You're finding out. And God mm -hmm. confirms the checks that yeah. you got in your spirit. Amen. See, God's not going to let us be deceived. Amen. Hallelujah. At all. That's right. Now, Hallelujah. sometimes he'll get us in situations where he's teaching us. Right. Where a deception is trying to work on right. you. And, and he then teaches the Lord you about shows it. you right. that is a deception. See? Right. Amen. And so what do you do when God shows you something? Do you, do you stay in a situation? No. You come out. You come out. Amen. Leave it. Uh, the thing is, Amen. what cost are we willing to pay? Everything? You know, I heard that guy the other day. He said, you're going to have to pay a little bit more of a cost to walk the true way. No, you're going to have to pay all. all. That's right. It's all God of wants life. all. All, all right. of us. That's right. Everything about us, everything That's we right. have, he wants all. That's right. Amen. Make no mistake about it. You People are listening to these people That's right. that are telling false it. things. I mean, because you think about it. You think about it. I, I was talking to Sharon this morning or yesterday evening about, I grew up in a big city. Just imagine a big city where people drive from the suburbs and, and lots and lots of people, thousands of people drive into the center of the city each day to work. And then in the afternoon, in the evening, they drive back home. Okay. So one morning they get up and they go into the city to work. And while they're in the city working, something really tragic happens. A big, gigantic thing. Boom. And they can't get out of the inner city back out to the suburb where they feel safe and comfortable in the evening. You see? They can't get back out there. What then? What are you going to do? Huh? Maybe you've got a lot of big armaments and guns at your house, but you don't take them to work with you. Huh? What are you going to do now? Right? See? Your gun's not going to save you. And I was telling Sharon, you know, I'm not going to carry the gun. And the people with the guns, their ammo's going to run out before my ammo does. That's right. You, <laughs> you carry a gun, all right, but it's not it's, a metal I mean, one. It's exactly, I have the sword <laughs> of the spirit, see? And their ammo will run out before mine. Even the New World Order, all their ammo and all their stuff they have, it'll run out before mine does. That's right. You see? That's exactly because right. Because <laughs> there are more on our side than on their <laughs> side. You see? And we know it. Yeah, okay? we do. And we're on the Lord's side. Mm -hmm. See? And so, because of that, I'm telling you, there's there's literally thousands of chief princes around God's people. We can and, feel and, the angels. Yeah, I mean We can it. feel I'm the angels. I'm telling you. And, and they're with us. Protecting us, keeping us. That's what the word says. They're ministers of flaming fire. Okay? And we need to just keep pressing into the Lord. We have such a heart for people. And, and it just grieves us so much when we see people straying. Or the devil's trying to pull people into his camp. Man, it just... I mean, we, we get a... Ooh, we just want to break the devil's head. Hallelujah. Or lying to and, him and yeah, making sense and, and, and that we, they're we know it. that the Lord has already done that. The Lord mm -hmm. has already broken all the power of the mm -hmm. devil. It's just the people have to turn to the Lord. See, turn to the Lord. He gives a choice, though. That's right, he does. The Lord always gives a choice. You He's know? testing his flock. He's testing his people. See, he is. I'm telling you right now. And a good shepherd, man, will will keep the sheep in the green pasture. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when the sheep are going to the bad pasture, they, they'll get that sheep and bring them back over to the good pasture. You see? And the shepherd uses the, the crook of the deal. He'll save a sheep from falling off the cliff. Or he'll use the club. And, and true shepherds today out in, in, in the Middle East or wherever they are in Africa or all over Europe, wherever they're shepherds, they have a club. And they can throw that club 100 yards and hit it, one particular sheep, bam, and just hit that sheep. See, that's what it's for, to discipline that sheep, you see. 
And and the Lord does the same thing. He does. And I'm telling you. And he's so good. Who's on the Lord's side? We're on the Lord's side here. This ministry, Witness and Testimony, with these broadcasts and, and with the word for today that we've done, and, and this Kings one, Road. the King's Road broadcast, and the evening devotional we're doing right now at 5 o'clock. And then when God impresses on us to make video messages, we put them up on YouTube. There's already 2,000 on there. I don't know how many. More than that. More than yeah. that. And, and the, words, the word has gone forth from our mouth, from our heart, by our experience. And we're, we're learning more and more every day. And you were talking about the attributes of God and the goodness of God and how he's everything to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And he's our provider. He is. Amen. He's the one who takes care of his people. God is. Not we ourselves. God takes care of us. Hallelujah. He shows us what to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray, honey. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank, thank you, you for this message. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. For those that are on your side. Yes. Oh, thank you, Lord. I thank you for that. And I pray, <coughs> Lord, that you will do whatever means necessary that you need to do to yes, get Lord. those strayers Come on, Lord. back onto your side. Whatever you have to do, whatever it takes, whatever it costs, do it, Lord. Get them back into the right way. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given us renewed strength, and I pray you give your people renewed strength, your true people, thank renewed you, strength, renewed hope yes. to continue on the way, no matter what, no matter if anyone goes with them or not, yes. you are with them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are with them. Yes. And let them know that in a mighty way today, Lord. Yes. And I thank you, Lord, that you have pulled down every scheme, every trap, everything the enemy's been trying to do, that you have destroyed it. And anything he tries to pop up and do, you're destroying it, Hallelujah. Lord. And I thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you, Lord. I thank you that you have crushed all his plans. Thank you, Lord. Already. Thank you, Jesus. And all his schemes already. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory Amen. to the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to learn to take the authority God has given us. Even more and more. Amen. He's just reminded me about the other night, too. Sometimes the Lord lets it happen where he lets me hear stuff in the Spirit literal stuff that's coming against us or whatever demons whatever you can literally hear them and sometimes they they sound very close and I the other night I went out there and that was happening I could feel in the spirit and I could hear it very loud and very clear and I just said in the name of Jesus you get out of here in Jesus name devil get out and be gone in the name of Jesus hallelujah and they were. We have got to take the authority God's given us. Amen. Praise God. Because the enemy tries to carry you down. You know, listen to the series that we're doing now on Evening Devotional. It's about defy the devil. And there's so many things that he uses. Intimidation. He magnifies stuff into a big old balloon. And we're going to talk about some other things the rest of this week and next week that the devil uses to pull God's people down. And guess what? We have. We defy him. Amen. <laughs> we defy him. Right. And God, God gives us many tools to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Central here on Spreaker, the King's Road broadcast, 7 a.m. And you come, listen, download. There's links all in this. Every message has all the links of all of our sites there where you can go to other sites and you go to the main blog and all the whole, everything is right there on the main blog. There's uh, so, links too to yeah. the evening devotional. Right. And so in the other, so, other broadcasts, other yeah. shows. And praise God. Hallelujah. Our email address, the Kings Road 2000 at gmail.com. Kings Road 2000 gmail.com. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his holy face shine upon you. 
the Lord our God lift up his holy countenance upon you, grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you. His name, that's his authority, his character, his dominion, his rule, his reign, hallelujah, his humility be in and upon your life today as you go forth conquering and to conquer. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to the King, hallelujah, hallelujah.